Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Um, this is in actual fact Beastie Room number two. This is the one that we've recreated and uh, we would have seen in our last video that um, the spiders have come back home. So uh, it's now time to get all of these boxes unloaded and find out what we've actually got because we had such a large collection. I know it's awful, but I've actually forgotten what I had. So I need to go back through it all now and we've got to sort it all out. We've also got a little bit of a dilemma because we are in a smaller room now. So we haven't got so much space. So before where we had uh, two large double rooms, we've now got one small double room. Um, and as you will see, it is filling up. We've got stuff all over the place. The shelves are filling up already. Um, what we've done at the moment is we've just put stuff out in a very, very basic way. Um, all of these down here, these have all filled up. We've got stuff up on the walls, up the top. You know, we have got stuff everywhere. Now, what we've done, to be fair, at the moment is we've literally, we're just filling shelves up. We're just putting stuff up everywhere. Um, so we can get an idea of what we got and what we're going to end up doing with it. Now, as you know, because we were spoilt for space, we were very, very lucky. We ended up with an awful lot of glass enclosures, which I really like because you can really decorate them nicely and you can do your bioactives and bits and pieces. It's really nice. But we are not going to have the luxury of being able to do as much of that in this room. Hence why the plan is to have an outside room later on next year. Now, um, when we get to that stage, we can go full out again, back like where we were and better. But in this scenario, this is the type of scenario I probably imagine where an awful lot of you guys are in this, this sort of situation where you're limited for space, your spider collection's growing, you know, and we need to try and house these things. So what we're going to do we are going to get everything out. We're going to fill up these shelves here behind me, probably fill up the desk uh, and every other available square inch that we've got in this room because we've got five boxes here. We've still got stuff at Portsmouth Tarantulas to come back. There is still glass tanks and what have you to come. Now, some of them are on egg sacs and that's why we've left them there. Um, and others are just, there weren't enough room in the car. But we've had two deliveries already and we're on our way. So what we're going to do to now is we are going to start opening up these boxes. And uh, Portsmouth basically um, filled these boxes up with as much as they could get in them so that we could get our stuff back in. Because obviously the show season's you know, in full run. We've got um, Bedford in a couple of weeks' time. So we need to be there. So we need to get some of our show stuff back as well. Now, what we done was, you remembered, when we moved out of the last one, we filled up a lot of our spiders, we put them in these bra blast tubs. Now, some of these have worked out really, really well, and others not so well. They didn't do so well in the bra blast tubs. So it's really a case of um, a bit of suck it and see, and it's been an absolute learning curve to see what spiders actually done well in these boxes, and which spiders didn't do particularly well. So it's been quite an interesting journey, both for us and for Portsmouth. You know, we, we all seem to have learned something from this experience, and it's been absolutely amazing. Now, um, obviously, we've had the odd casualty, um, and funny enough, the casualties that we have had, and there hasn't been many, there's only been a few, some of them were mature males that would have passed on anyway. And we did lose a couple of females. And they, the ones that we lost were all in these small bra blast tubs. So that was an interesting thing in itself. Now, here's my funnel webs. I do love my funnel webs. And they've done really well. I've got a, I can see a couple of them on the top here now. I'll tell you what, come and have a look. Come and have a look. You, you've got to see these guys. Hopefully we can get the lid off without them disappearing because you know what they're like. As soon as they feel a little bit threatened, 
They stick their bum in the dirt. And there we go. Right, here we go. Yeah, look at that. As soon as she felt that lid coming off, she's gone in there. You're not probably not going to see her now. She's too dark. That's a shame. We will get a, we'll have a proper update because these guys now are actually of a size where they really do need to be rehoused. So that's a good thing because we've got to rehouse them. There's another one there. You can probably see that one if I just tilt it and get a nice look of it through the box. This is fabulous. Actually seeing all these spiders again, I can't tell you how excited I am. I do love these funnel webs. Oh, that's beautiful things. I know they're not everyone's cup of tea, but you know, I think they're fantastic. They make me go all gooey. Right, we're gonna work our way through this stuff and we're gonna basically try and get some kind of semblance as to what we're gonna do. Now, as we said earlier on, one of the other things that we've got is we need to work out, because of the space that we've, we've lost a lot of space, so we need to um, we need to basically try and work out what we're going to keep, what we're going to move on going forward, and this, in a way, has given us a really, really good opportunity to work our way through the collection and see what is worth hanging on to and proceeding with in the future. It's nice to see some of the panther beaters here. These have all come on really well. Now we noticed, as we were saying earlier on, some spiders done well in these, some didn't. And we found that the um, the terrestrial spiders, they done okay. They didn't do too bad at all. Um, they've been absolutely fine. Um, the ones that seem to suffer was the fossorial spiders. They didn't do so well. Now. We had a couple of losses with the fossorial spiders, um, and they were all in these smaller bra plus boxes. So that sort of says something, and I think it wasn't down to um, husbandry or anything like that. I think it was down purely to stress, you know. And bearing in mind, they were all adult spiders as well. So, you know, we've no idea for some of them how old they would have been and things like that. But I think stress played the biggest part in um, in the downfall to some of these guys. Now, here we go. You've not seen these for a long time. These are well worth a look. If I come around to the light a little bit more, there we go, that's better. Look how well these have grown. These are our six-eyed sand spiders. And these have done really, really well. They're coming on, so we're gonna we're gonna do a nice little video on these guys, I think, and we'll show them. Now we had um, a difference in um, in successes with the sand spiders back in the early days. We we managed to pick up a little group of them, and um, some done really well, and others just failed. And they were all kept exactly the same. So some flourished, some failed. And that brings us back to where we've been in the past, where we've said about um, different, different um, spiders with the success rates with the youngsters, with the slings. You know, it's, it's not always down to your husbandry. I'm pretty sure that quite often or not, it is literally down to natural selection within the slings. So not all slings are born to survive. These are all our Balfouris coming out now. These are all our breeding females. And they've all look, they're looking absolutely marvellous. Looking really good. Yeah, a couple of OBTs here. Now one of the OBTs that we'd actually paired up that did, in fact, drop a sack inside one of these bra blast tubs. Um, unfortunately, she did eat it uh, later on, but quite an incredible thing to see it actually all in there and all done up. I never actually thought that it was going to be of any good in the first place because it wasn't a particularly good pairing. 
and um, I wasn't expecting her to drop, to be totally honest. Now, we've got so much stuff. You see, what we all we need to do now is we literally just need to try and work out what we got. These are our fat axes. Work out what we got so that we can start stacking them up on the shelves and we get an idea of where we're going with it all. Oh, that's a lassus. So we're going to quickly dig these out. Put these down here. Yep. Now some of these will um, will be we will move them on. We've ended up with um, a number of spiders that we had that were up for the shows. So we got them to go as well. Now these are our slings. These are the Thai zebra slings that um, hatched out while they were at Portsmouth Tarantulas. You would have remembered the pairing video. Absolutely fantastic pairing video. They looked really awesome on film, the, the adults. And they are a lovely, lovely spider. So we've got youngsters of those. So we were really chuffed to have actually managed to breed those. So we're going to put them up here. They can come up with all of our slings. Everything up on the top here, this is all slings that we've bred um, and some that we bought in, but the majority of them have actually been bred here. So that's one box down. We're going to move that out of the way. Throw that outside. All right, let's try another box, shall we? So you'll see at the moment that we're literally just stacking them all up and all over the place. And there is a little bit of a system here. We're putting different spiders in different groups. And then hopefully we can get an idea of where we are and see what we got. Now then, we've got more and more coming in here. Oh, this is a, this is a forest scorpion, a very gravid one. And you've not seen this one on the, on the um, channel before. This is one that we picked up from our good friend Reese down at BH Exotics in Kinston. And as you can see there, she is fit to burst. And hopefully, we'll have some babies from her very soon. And that should make a nice video. So we need to get her rehoused, get her in a nice setup. That'll be really nice. We have got another one here somewhere. I can't remember where I'll put it now. Um, right. Did you just bump into something, my dear? No, it was the door behind you. Was it the door? Oh, I'm so used to you bumping into things. I thought it was you. I do. I do apologise. I thought it can't be the heater, guys. The heater's over here. <laughs> How on earth could she manage to do that? Well, never mind. Right. Okay. <laughs> Here's our Vietnam silvers. So we'll get these out as well. Get these up here. Whoa! Look at this. Quick, quick. It's, it's disappearing down in there. Right, I'm going to get a bit of light on this, guys. Look down there. Quick, 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 because it doesn't like the light. See it right down the bottom there. Oh, God, no. Sorry, Dave. Where am I going? Oh, I see her now with my eye. Let me come this side. Oh, gosh. You can't see it. I can't get her on. Right, okay. Now then. Sorry about all that camera. Excited. Yeah, my all-terrain camera lady <laughs> fell off the grid there for a minute. We have got that's fabulous, isn't it? We've actually got an escapee inside the box, and it's a really, really cool spider. To be fair, a really, really nice spider. So what we're going to do is we are going to try and dig our way down it. Right, there's a reduncus. Move that one up there for the minute. We're going to try and dig this spider out. These are all ugly. These are all ugly. So nice seeing all these spiders again. It really is. Now then. Right. These are our subfuscas. So we know we got those. So what we're going to do. Right. Right, here's the offending tub. See the lids off. And what we had in here was a P. Metallica. 
I say was because it's now loose in the box. So we've now got a, we've got a finder and catcher. I can actually see her to be fair. Right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to move these out of here. All right, put this one up here. Now what's happened is, is that lead on that box, that's one of the, um, one of these, these airtight boxes that you can buy at the supermarket. And you press the little button on the top and it releases it and you can get them. Now they're perfectly fine. They're good for your spiders. Your spider won't generally push that up unless it's a very strong spider. But what's happened is, is while all the boxes are in here, when we lift the box, it obviously contorts. And one of the other boxes has popped the corner of the box up and it's literally been enough for the spider to, to get out. So not a big issue. We can deal with that. We're used to loose spiders. Here's one of our one of our big female regardless. She's looking wonderful. Yeah, when I say we're used to loose spiders, I don't mean runaway spiders. I mean we're used to just catching spiders. Right, the top's empty so you can see. Right, do you what I'm gonna do, if you come over and look down in here, when I move this this tub, you won't be over there, my love. You won't. I do. No, you won't. Oh, we can see legs. Can you see legs? Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this one away. And there she is. Look at that. Isn't she beautiful? Now, I haven't got my favourite paintbrush. Oh, no. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk her up nice and gently. Didn't actually want her to go down the side of the box, but there you go. So, here we go. Now, this is going to be interesting because I haven't got that many hands. So, we're going to put that up there like so. We're just going to bring this over. We're going to put it down there. Have you got this? Mm -hmm. And we're just going to, nice and gently, see, she knows we're not here to bother her. We're just going to put her back indoors. Look at that. And there she goes. Just tickle her feet a little. There you go. Simple as that, guys. Right. She is back in her house. Well, how about that? One. Runaway Metallica, back home. Isn't that cool, eh? Isn't that cool? Right. That was nice, wasn't it? Weren't expecting that. Weren't expecting that at all. Um, let me put that up there for a minute. Right then, let's see what else we got. Uh, well, we're on for the bigger tubs now. Well, there's a murinous in here somewhere. Now, what happened was, because... Some of the fossorial spiders were suffering a little bit in the um, in the bra blast. Uh, Scott and Danielle and the guys over at Portsmouth, they actually rehoused some of those spiders and put them into some of the enclosures they had knocking around um, in the shop. And it's been a really good thing because it's definitely saved the lives of some of these spiders. Oh, here's our Mahonda. Our male is still alive. He's still running around. Isn't that absolutely incredible? Actually, no, I'm not going to open that up because you remember how fast these guys were. We might have caught that Metallica nice and easy, but I don't think we'd be quite so swift with the um, with the Mahonda. Oh, my God, look at these. Oh, oh. Now these have had a molt since I last saw them. So they've actually put on a bit of size. We're gonna do a video because you guys haven't seen these before, but we're gonna do a video on these because they're gonna to need to be rehoused. Look at that. 
Isn't that just absolutely stunning? That is fabulous. Look at that. Such stint will show for us. Yeah. That is a robustum. And this is this is a species of spider that I've been very keen to to breed. I also think they're just absolutely fabulous looking. Really, really nice. I mean, these really are a special, special spider. I think they're beautiful. Oh, I'm chuffed to bits to see that. Now, we've got a number of these. I think we've got four of these, I believe. Um, and they were for uh, a little breeding project that we had planned. So it's good to see they've come out the other side. Another about, about four -y. It's like Christmas, isn't it? Why aren't you saying that? It's not like Christmas, because I wish I'd had this many prezzies when I was a kid. It would have been absolutely wonderful. Look at these. Here come the polkras. They're all coming out now. Now, one word of warning. If you do keep polkras, as I know many of you do, these are not the best tubs to keep them in. Because out of all of the spiders, if there's a spider that's going to push its way out, it's one of these polkras. They are incredibly strong, and they manage to pop these lids off with a fair amount of ease, to be fair. Oh, here's our harmonicons. Oh, let's have a little look at this. Look at this. Got a nice bit of light down here, actually. Got to be very careful with these. Super, super fast. Look at that. Isn't that just wonderful? Again, another super spider. And one that we're really hoping to breed. Now, unfortunately, our adult female, she passed. Um, she had a bit of a dodgy molt. And um, that, was the, that was the last of her. We're not quite sure why that was, whether it, it could have been a number of issues. As I said before, I think sometimes with doing a big move like this, changing their environment, everything else, puts them under a huge amount of stress. And um, yeah, some of them just don't cope with it so well. Others do fine. Here's one of our big female polkras. Look at her. Lovely big girl. Lovely jet black, velvety black. This is another one that we're hoping hoping to um, breed. These guys are not the easiest spider in the world to breed. And they do require some conditioning. And by conditioning, I mean they these are one of the one of the spiders that actually requires a cooling down period, like many of the reptiles. With the reptiles, we used to have to cool them down and then warm them back up again to get them ready for breeding. The polka are very similar. So again, they're going to be an, uh, an interesting one to, to have a play around with and see what we can do with those. Mega, mega exciting. What we got in here? Oh, it just says malt. <laughs> oh, this is one of our, one of our common pink toes. So we'll put that over there. So much lovely stuff. Even if I do say so myself. I'm not being funny, but I think I've got good taste in spiders. I'm loving every one of these. It's really cool. Right. Oh, look at these. These have grown as well. Isn't it funny how when you look at your own spiders all the time, you don't necessarily see the growth rate in them i've had people come around before now and they're like wow that's got big since the last time i saw it and i'm like really i don't think so but opening these up now i'm looking at some of these and i'm thinking wow look at the size of that look at that what a stunning stunning spider that's a pure artist this is a male a juvie male but look at the colouring, look at the gold coming out. 
fabulous looking, fabulous. Whoa, he has really, really grown. He was half that size when I put him in the box. I don't know what the guys at Portsmouth have been feeding them, but they're, um, some of these have really put on some size. Another funnel web. Oh, do you like your funnel webs? Another lovely funnel web. What we got here? Oh, diamanthus. Another very cool spider. Do you know what? I don't think we've got any spiders that aren't cool. I think they're all pretty cool. Right. What we got here? This is a Peter Sai, yes, a Peter Sai. Nice to see our Peter Sai's have done well. They've all survived so far. We've got three of them up there. I think we've got one more to find. Our little blondie here. This one's coming on well. Yeah, look, there she is. She's growing well. She was just a tiny little thing. I do believe she's had a malt. Looking really nice. Now we're going to do a bit of a, a bit of a catch up on our Therophosas because they are one of the spiders that we played around with with enclosures and we gave them really big tubs to um, to go in and to see how they would end up responding. And to be absolutely fair, they're in huge tubs and they're not really using them at all. They're not doing anything with them at all. So. Um, we're uh, going to have a little look and see see what we can do. Maybe downsize their enclosure a little bit. Um, I don't believe it's it's actually given us any benefit by having them in these big big enclosures. I don't think they're gaining anything from it. Oh, a red island bird eater. We've got a big female of them. Another Auratus. Wow. I'm cracking through. No more runaways. That was quite cool finding that. Right. Oh. Now then, we've still got three boxes. I think maybe what we will do... Um... Uh, how long have we been running for? I don't know. You don't know. Oh dear. Right. I think what we will do, we need to sort out a little bit of space in here now. So I think we're going to break this video down into two videos. Because I think we've got an awful lot going on. We've still got another three boxes to uncover. And we need to make a bit of room. Or we're going to run out of space altogether. So I think we've still got all of our pokies and that to go through. So that's going to be a really cool one. So I think we'll we'll call it a day for this video. Um, hopefully you you got to see actually to this time you got to see a few spiders that you wouldn't wouldn't have seen before. Some of the stuff that we've kept back in the wings to have a bit of a grand reveal, and uh, and they've come out now. So <laughs> so you've got to see them a little bit before you should have done, but. It's really cool. And as you can see there, a lot of these spiders have, have done really, really well. The, the, the actual, they've been at Portsmouth now for, I think, around about four months. And um, like I can say, most of them have done exceptionally well. Some of them have put on some massive size as well. So that's a really cool thing. And it sort of like opens up some of the, some of the questions, um, especially to do with housing. Now we often see in in the um, in the hobby, people getting hammered for housing spiders in different enclosures, different styles, sizes, how much size they have, how much substrate they have, all these different things. Now these spiders have just done four months living in boxes, which is an absolute testament to the spider and how it can actually deal with changes in environment. Now, the only ones that seem to have suffered in any sort of um, way, really, 
have been the fossorial spiders. And that's not all of them. Um, and I think the couple that we lost were full, full blown, big, big adult spiders. So they were probably quite old spiders in comparison. And, um, and they, they didn't do so well. Once they got rehoused, we, you know, Danielle and the guys, they rehoused most of the fossorial spiders. Once we saw what was going on, they literally, they were on it in a flash and they changed them up. They took them out of the tubs. They put them into other enclosures. You know, there's a lot of these enclosures that we have here aren't actually mine. They belong to the Portsmouth tarantulas. So we need to get these spiders back over and moved over. So some of them didn't do so well, but we were on it real quick. I say we, the guys at Portsmouth tarantulas were on it real quick. And they started to realize very, very early on that some just weren't doing well. They were stressing out in that kind of environment. And they changed them up and we solved the problem. So everything was good. Now, um, but what remains is the fact that all of these other spiders have done really, really well for four months living in a bra plast box. So it makes you wonder how, you know, it shows you how much you're actually capable of doing with your own spiders and what they can withstand. As long as your actual basic uh, husbandry is good, the size enclosure hasn't made a huge amount of difference to their well-being, which is really, really fascinating stuff. It's really interesting. I find it fascinating. So um, it also gives us a little bit of um, faith in the fact that with the amount of spiders we got, we said in the previous video that we are looking at actually downsizing a lot of these glass enclosures and putting our, our spiders into smaller ones so that we don't have to disperse the collection too much. We can maintain the majority of the collection, but we will maintain them in smaller enclosures, which, you know, within the hobby is how an awful lot of people do keep them. So it's going to be an interesting thing to follow that through and see what the ups and downs of, of that is. The only real downside for us as a hobbyist is we lose the bioactive side of it a little bit um, because it's difficult to do that in small small tubs. It's, it's pretty much impossible. So um, that will be the downside for us as keepers. But as a, as a thing for the spider, it shouldn't make any difference. It should be fine. And it's going to be a good thing to document and we can, we can see and show how we're going to do that. Right then. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I am in desperate need of a cup of tea. Camera lady's arms look like they're about to fall off because she's been holding the camera all this time. So we're going to go and get a cup of tea and then we will meet you back here for part two and unbox the rest of these spiders. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget, be calm, be gentle and love your spider. And I will see you soon, guys.